I want to introduce you all to Ken Herman. Ken's work straddles two very different, unique worlds. When at home in Copenhagen, he works on advertising campaigns for a variety of clients. Meanwhile, in his personal work, Ken travels to remote parts of the world to document and bring attention to individuals living on the fringes of their communities. Following his series on the tribes in the Omo Valley, Ethiopia, and his work documenting both coal miners and the Kum Mela holy men in India, his most recent project earlier this year saw Ken travel to Bangladesh to focus on acid attack survivors. So without further ado, I will introduce Mr. Ken Herman. I want to talk about two different projects today. One project is um, the latest one. Um, it's a project about um, people from Bangladesh who have been victim victimized um, from acid attacks. And the next one is um, track on here. Yes. Um, the next one is um, from Ethiopia, um, and it's a project called Beauty of Omo Valley. And um, the first. And the most recent project I've done is um, from Bangladesh, and it's done. Um, it's it, it's a project um, of 20, 25 different portraits of all asset victims, and it's done uh, in collaboration with an um, organization called Asset Survivor Foundation. Um, and and the reason <coughs> the, the reason why I did this was I was there on an assignment uh, last year. Um, for um, Save the Children Denmark. And, and then I heard about this um, organization who takes care of um, asset victims. They give them medical treatment, um, med medical treatments and, and all, sorts of, all sorts of stuff. And it's, um, it's, a, yeah, it's a hospital, but and it's, it's, it's run by donations only. I just thought it could be um, interesting to do portraits of the um, survivors um, in a more in a different way what you normally see. Um, maybe to to show some of the beauty behind uh, some of the scars and, and stuff. And it, it all started out as a personal project, um, and it just kind of scaled from that. We. I, I started to get um, some help from one of my friends. He's a video video photo photographer, and uh, we start uh, looking into fundings and stuff. Um, um, yeah, as I said, um, uh, the organization is from 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 Dhaka, is the capital in Bangladesh, and and all almost all the projects we we did there. Um, some of them is from some of the villages uh, outside, not not outside, but maybe. 10, 10 hours outside and 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 some is this is just a little behind the scene from from one of the shot the woman you see here um, she, she, she's got um, thrown acid in her head uh, from her husband um, her parents they arranged a marriage when she was nine but uh, uh, but but the, the, but when 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 they arranged it so, so when she was 18, she had to marry this guy. It was one of um, her father's employees. He's a rickshaw driver, but but this guy couldn't wait until um, until she 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 become 18. So so she, she he wanted to force her to marry um, him before, but they didn't want the family wouldn't allow it. So so he ended up throwing acid in her head. Um, the, the, the project was was very different in many ways compared to what I normally do because uh, when I do travel abroad, sometimes it's planned, but 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 there's only there's only a certain amount you can plan beforehand. And with this project, um, I contacted um, the organization. Uh, I think maybe near eight or ten months before we went there to 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 explain them about what I wanted to do, and there was a lot of back and forth and and. And they, they we had to kind of gain some trust um, to, to me to, to because it's very sensitive and 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 yeah so so in that way it took me took me eight months to to convince them and and when they allowed me to do it then um, there was a lot of then it was then it was it was quite easy because uh, they they kind of arranged everything for me uh, they they found all the, uh, because they had all the survivors of the victims in their network so they just. Um, Explained them the project. It was very important for me that uh, that they didn't force anything to do the portraits. They they had to 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 do it or, or be willing to do it uh, themselves. So so. 
um, it was a, so it took nearly yeah, eight or ten months to to to, to go there. Uh, but but um, and in the meantime, when they allowed me to do it, uh, we had we had a few months to to see if we can get any funding for funding for this. And and we got some money from from um, Amnesty International and the Danish Journalist Union. And there was some different brands, Hasselblad camera and some lighting equipment, who all helped um, making this project um, 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 possible. Um, this this woman here, um, Nila, she is um, she got married um, to a 20 years older guy from South Arabia, and um, after they married, uh, he he wanted to move back, but she she she, she didn't want to do that. Um, and she uh, she uh, refused to do it, and uh, it ended up uh, he ended up throwing acid in her head. She is um, she used to be a really pretty girl, uh, as you probably can see, and she is she's damaged, but but they they got a lot of uh, she, she she got a lot of plastic surgery done, so so they kind of recovered her. I saw some of the image before um, before she she got all the surgery, and and she she's uh, recovering really well. Um, a really wonderful person. She was very, very happy and very smiley, but not on the picture, but she was. Um, and and uh, the worst thing about about all these acid attacks uh, is that they don't do it to kill; they just do it to damage. Uh, and 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 it's. I think it's a question. It's, it's a question about lack of education because they don't know the consequences. They don't know what's happening and and stuff. They just know they don't kill them, but they just they just like burn them for life. Um, Poppy, uh, this girl was probably one of the survivors of victims that was um, the worst one, not the worst one, but the most difficult one to to um, uh, shoot because uh, um, she, she, she's very pretty and it's very difficult to see that she, she has um, scars and stuff, but, but she was just um, cry, crying all the time under the, the shoot and uh, when, when my friend Ty, he did the video documentary. Because her story is that, that um, it's dowry. Dowry is, is, if you don't know, it's when, when you get married, the girl's family have to pay some money to the guy's family. And when when she got arranged married, the guy said that that there was no money involved, so they could just get married. So so that's why her family agreed, and and they could afford it. But when af after they got married, she, he, he started to get greedy, and he wanted um, he started asking for money, and he started asking for more and more, and in the end they couldn't pay the money, and he got violence. And and then one day when she was um, she was sick, she had fever, she asked her husband for some water, and instead of water, he gave her acid. So, 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 if you look, uh, you can't probably see it here, but if you look very closely uh, on her left uh, chin, there's just a, 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 a tiny drop. That's 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 the only thing you can see. It's all inside. So, so, in 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 that way, it's very it's very. Her story is different, and because nobody can tell, she she's very traumatized and very um, yeah yeah. She's she's very damaged inside, and and her. Yeah, her story was just unique because she, she she can't do it. All the other victims, they can go out outside and stuff because it's just on the outside. Her is inside. She she's been in that hospital bed for three years. She can't go anywhere. The, her only hope for the future is when if somebody pay uh, her enough money so she can go abroad to the U.S. or Europe Europe somewhere and get um, surgery surgery inside. Even though they're really good at the hospital in Bangladesh, they can't do it inside. Um, the, um, the easy part um, on this trip was that, that everything was planned, so it was very easy for us to just, we just had our own fixer, we had the driver and everything, so, so we just traveled around and, and we did the whole project on seven or eight days shooting. Normally it takes quite longer. Um, compared to when, when, when I was in India um, shooting in the coal mine area, it, it was different because um, Jaria, it's a big area in India where they produce a lot of coal, one of the biggest places in the world. And that area is controlled by the, um, the, da the, 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 not the Danish, of course, but the Indian government. I wish it was the Danish, but the Indian government and the, the, the local mob or mafia, what you call it. And, and it, they, they, they don't really like you taking pictures. And especially not the, not the government, but, but the mob, you can't really call them ahead and say, I'm coming for a few days. Can you please show me around? So, but, but this, so this was 
in, in many ways easier because everything was scheduled. Um, the, only, the only real um, problem we had was the national strike. Um, that's kind of why I show you this image. Uh, um, when they have a strike in Bangladesh, it's pretty serious. You can't really, you don't go anywhere. You're not allowed to drive in any vehicles at all. Only the ambulances will go. And if you drive, they, they actually kill you. They can throw, um, what do they call, firebombs in the car, or they can even shoot you. So they, it's pretty serious. And and, and, and we only had the, the seven days there. So 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 we were kind of, um, and they I think there was two two or three days strike there when we were there. So it was pretty, um, pretty annoyed about it and then our our guide from the hospital said no we're just going to use the ambulance and, and and because it's allowed to to drive so so and it was it was pretty clever because me and ty he's a very tall guy was just sitting in there with all our equipment and and just bending down uh, while we're driving around uh, uh, to 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 the victims um, um what i like um uh, the most uh, uh, about doing this project is that, that um, maybe that's in the photographer in general. It's a very very good excuse to to sneak into people's home if you're curious, and and you, it, it just allows you a lot of stuff. Well, you'll never never will come if you didn't have the camera, and and and. On the more um, professional side, it, it, it's a really good opportunity for you to um, to try out new ideas. Um, I have a com background in commercial photography, so I use a lot of lighting and stuff when I shoot. So so it's a perfect opportunity for me to test out if if it's not too too big of a crowd. Sometimes you attract a lot of crowd, but but it's a really good opportunity for me to do. Um, and there's nobody, nobody. Um, there's no art directors. that nobody tells you what to do. You can do exactly the way you want to do it. Um, and that was very important um, doing the whole funding of this project. Uh, that Amnesty, Amnesty, who paid uh, the, the 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 most to this project, they 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 were allowed to pay us the money, but they didn't have any say in it. They they we wanted to do it exactly the way that we we kind of planned to do it. And they they said that that, that was just fine by by them. They just want to publish the picture in their magazines and stuff. Um, this guy, he he was really lovely. Um, um, Abdul Kara, he, he he was the guy from the village you saw before. He he, he was damaged. Uh, no, he was there was thrown acid uh, on him. I think in the nineties, I think. So, uh, and 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 there was uh, it was his cousin. They had some problem with some land disputes, uh, and 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 he was just nice because he he started after. Um, it's not all. All of them is not terrible stories because some of them, some of the victims, they come from really, really poor parts of, of Bangladesh. The organization brings people in from the from all over the country, and 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 on the bright side is that if people are getting attacked um, by acid, um, they get um, all the, the help they need. And sometimes they even get educations and stuff, or most of the time they will do our job afterwards. And and if they didn't have this attack or uh, got damaged, they will never have been able to get the, the education. And he started studying, and the, the thing he just wanted to was to actually move to Denmark of some funny reason. Um, and, and sadly, some of them are children as well. Um, this guy, he was not the main victim. Uh, most of the children who, who got um, uh, get at, um, damaged by acid is is because they're sleeping in in very small rooms, very close to the parents um, or one of them, um, and and that's why he, he got damage on his arm. Um, there was there was some. It was very important for me not to show. Uh, I want to show, um, of course, some of the the, the 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 badly ones, but not not the the really bad ones because. I still wanted to see if I could find some beauty in the pictures. Um, some of them were really, really bad. Um, and even though there was even infants, there was a, a, a he was he was three, four now. He, he and he lived in in his hospital for yeah since since he was born almost. There was his uh, his aunt. Um, he gave his acid through the you know the bottle, baby bottle, because he was jealous of some uh, there was some money issues in the family. Um, this writer here, she she rejected she rejected a love proposal, and uh, she's damaged on her body. But but I just I just liked the way she dressed and her face. So and and it was not necessary for me to show uh, the scars on all the pictures. 
um, this was um, family related disputes uh, of some kind. I can't uh, remember what it was with her. With her. Um, this guy was one of the staff from the S um, ASF, uh, the organization. Um, I just like him. Uh, he got. Uh, it's almost graphic if you can find some positive in, the, in. In I looked a lot of these pictures. So so and and maybe that's why it was. I could do it. You can you can kind of use uh, the camera in some way to uh, as a shield. Uh, you're so focused on get, getting this right picture and with the lighting and everything, so so you don't look at it uh, that much uh, when when you're shooting. But afterwards, when you start doing post and stuff, I kind of it's some there's some graphic stuff about his face. I just like his his face. Um, this guy, he, he's he, he's pretty bad, badly damaged. Uh, uh, he was one from one of the villages, uh, and the reason why he is. Uh, so badly damaged is because um, at the time did they they I think it was in the nineties as well they didn't know what to do um, they, I think that there was lack of education so if somebody threw acid they didn't know they had to pour water and stuff and there was no medical surgery at that time um, and and the organization ASF they helped doing that they teach the, 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 um, the people in the school to to what what they have to do if if it happens. Um, um, the project got a lot of press um, doing it. I got a nicely, um, some nicely picture from a portfolio, I think. But but on the bright side, um, it got a lot of attention um, in the global media around, and hopefully, it'll make people aware about the pro problem and start donating some more money for the organization in Bangladesh. Um, at the time, there's a biggest there's an ex exhibition in Copenhagen, where I'm from. Um, um, on this on this project, it's a it's a media project. It's the the pictures or some of the pictures and and the, the, the web, uh, web documentary. Um, this we're just gonna fly over to Africa. We've been to Africa today, and this is um, this is from Ethiopia, and it's from my project called Beauty of Omo Valley. Um, I've been there. Twice now, and I'm I'm just very fascinated about the, the different tribes living there. Um, they just inspire me in some kind of way. They just it's just so different from from our everyday life here. And my ambition with this project was just to to make some beautiful beautiful nice uh, portraits um, and see if uh, in this very remote part of the world. Um, the tribes, they um, live like they've done for the last thousand years. Um, they don't have any that much contact with the outside world. They don't really care. They don't need to. Uh, they don't have any running water. There's no electricity, savage, or shopping centers. There's, they just, some, sometimes they just walk around naked, basically. Um, um, what I like um, about portraits like this is when everything fits together. I really like when when the model or the per person and the background, everything is just kind of mixing nicely together. I think it makes a really strong image and, it, and, and I think that says a lot of the way I shoot my pictures. Um, one of one of the things when I do travel, especially in these parts of the world, is um, I'm just I'm not afraid about getting shot or anything. I'm more afraid about if anything happens to my equipment, um, because that will be the worst. Uh, uh, um, and 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 you can't really afford uh, to travel with several cameras or lighting equipments. And 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 I'm always really really um, um, paranoid about it. I think um, the, f the second time I was in in um, Ethiopia. I knew it was always difficult to get into Ethiopia with a lot of equipment because they don't like journalists or photographers or whatsoever. Uh, so, but the second time I was there, the first time they just looked at all my equipment and they just said, okay, go. Uh, this is a tourist visa. Um, sometimes it's just better to not ask about the journalist visa, just go on the tourist. And, and the second time there, um, I was hoping for the same, but, but he didn't say go this time. He said, go into the custom. And uh, and uh, and when I went in there, there was a lot of people there and a lot of mess and stuff stuff going on. And and in front of me there was this um, mostly local people. In front of me, this I think he was a British guy. He he was just 
a young traveler. He was just almost crying because they they had they, they found this kind of I think it was some DJ mixer with the, the um, uh, CD turntables or whatever, and 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 they wanted him to to pay custom on it. And they they tell you you get the money back when you travel out, but 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 I'm not sure you'll get the money back. <laughs> and and they are quite clever because they look at the retail price on the internet. So they 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 look on Google and say, okay, this is worth six hundred quid, and you have to pay twelve hundred in custom. And 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 he was he was just like this is more than what I what he bought it from and, and and he was just in front of me and I was just kind of start complaining and I got the manager and everything and the manager he was he didn't care at all and I was just like okay if that guy has to pay twelve hundred I have to pay a million for all my equipment <laughs> so it's just like and 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 my my whole thing about being so if if he take my uh, if if my lighting equipment or my camera I'll kind of be lost it'll be a waste of time so I just I just saw my my opportunity just to to run off uh, or sneak off <laughs> so I just I, I, I went through without uh, and I walked quite fast and and that 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 afterwards I was just been thinking okay I will never have done that anywhere else uh, um, and I was paranoid for I don't know three days. Every time I saw a police car or anything, I was just like, "Oh my God, they 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 they, they found me." <laughs> um, but but I just it was just so important for me. Um, yeah, you're just kind of getting into it. Um, a lot, um, another challenge is if you're shooting in a remote places, it's 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 very difficult for them for the local people to understand what you want, even though you have a fixer or a guide to explaining you explaining them what they they, they think is just you mean. Like you just take one picture and that's it. I, I want to work with them. I, I find often um, I find the location. Oh, this is a nice background. That could be nice with a girl or whatever. And then I set everything up. It's very stage, uh, and it, it, that's it's very difficult for them to to understand why why I does uh, why I do it that way. Um, the guy, the one guy in India, he just told me, but why why you come all the way down here? I can just send you the pictures. I have pictures of coal miners. <laughs> And I try to explain him, but but it's very very difficult. Another challenge is the long days. Um, I want to get the most out of it. So in in, in the mo I, it's before sunset. As was it look at the ten and four, you don't take any pictures. Sometimes you do because you have. But so it's it's very early, and then you shoot all day, and then then it's it's long days. And on my, on my first trip there, there was. Uh, we was camping because if you go at this place, there's no hotel, there's no lodges, there's nothing. Uh, and, and if you do camping, it, it's in Ethiopia, it's get really warm in the tent. Uh, and 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 when you go home from a long day of shooting, you have to to um, to do make your own food and all, all that stuff. So so it's just long days. But 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 that's that's the kind of the challenges and the downside. Um, I just wanted. Quickly show you a short movie so you'll get an idea about uh, working in, in these parts of the world. And this is just uh, me shooting with the GoPro. It's very low key, low production, and sometimes it's even my guide or my driver uh, filming. So, so bear in mind of that. Um, yes, here we go.
I think, um, yeah, it's just so you kind of get an idea. Um, I think um, I started quite late with my studying. I, I got a degree in commercial photography and, and I finished that four years, five years ago. And I started quite late um, after college or school. I just had 10 years where I just kind of fooling around. Uh, and I did just work in random places around the world and I traveled a lot. And I think that's kind of be- uh, made me the photographer I am today and it's a perfect combination if you can do what you love to do the most and even though sometimes earn a little bit of money on and sometimes you spend them uh, um, so so um, another thing about the people in Omo Valley is um, they lots of them wear guns uh, and they do it for a reason sometimes there's big conflicts going on between the different tribes and sometimes they need to shoot a cattle or maybe a tourist or whatever they do and, and, and sometimes it's just for you know prestige um, um, there's a lot of st- stuff going on there at the moment there's a lot of changing in the area um, the, the, the Musi tribe here is probably one the, the most famous one is the one with the lip plate um, they, they, um, they especially the men they drink a lot um, and, and when you do visit the villages they, they are the one that is the, 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 the in, you find in the most remote areas you have to have a gunman or police to escort you because all of them are wearing uh, having guns and 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 and, and the gun combination about getting where being drunk and have guns is, is not always that good mm-hmm. so so you have to uh, you have to leave the village before around 12 o'clock noon because they just get too drunk uh, and the reason why they get so drunk is because um, they don't do what they used to do. They normally do go hunting and have having cattle and be, being farmers. But but because the, 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 the tourism is increasing and photographers like me is coming, they they start earning money in that way. So so they don't have to do what they used to do. So they get bored, um, and and that's why they start drinking. Uh, and 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 a thing I didn't realize before I got there was that that um, they it's. It's pretty organized. Uh, it's probably the, the most remote place I've ever been to in the world, and and the only place where they have fixed prices for taking pictures, <laughs> uh, which was pretty strange. And and there's no money, no picture. Um, so in that way, if you come there as a photographer, tourist, to tourist, you kind of yeah, it's it's I don't know if if I'm against it or, or what I, what I remember, but yeah. Um, they, they, the first place I, I, I shot, uh, on my second trip it was easier because I've been there and they kind of recognized me, I got pictures and prints for them and, and they were really happy about seeing themselves on the photograph and, and there was a lots of freebies there so I didn't have to pay all the time and I could kind of arrange a fixed price and all stuff. But 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 the first time uh, there was literally a, a whole village, um, I don't know how many people, counting. I didn't know what, what they were saying but my guy said they're counting and they count every time the flash went off. Uh, and it can get get pretty expensive because I use maybe half an hour or, or one hour on pre-lighting and we're just testing and they count that as well. Even though, <laughs> even though there was no, uh, no 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 nobody in front of the camera. So in the end, I was just shooting test on my guide and then I brought in because on the first trip because it was difficult for me to explain them. Um, on, on, and another place we was pretty weird as well. There was the whole village probably 100 people they just um, came out of the huts or the uh, whatever they live in the small you know um, and they just was standing in a half circle around me and and the village chief he just said take one or point uh, I was just like it was very awkward because then you it was weird because they were just used to photographers not yeah or maybe tourists and you could just point one and then you just yeah you took a picture of one um, I guess that's the, um, the downside of it um, on the other hand, it helps them to get educated and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really imagine that before, uh, beforehand when I kind of planned it. And, and I didn't, I didn't know that you had to pay a village in, entry to the village chief. You had to pay for the gunman, the police. You had to. There was a lot of business going on there. Um, but um, yeah, and, and then I. In India, like say that the coal miners, that their biggest concern was um, 
uh, if they looked poor. There was very proud people. Nobody asked for money at all. There was one drunk uh, miners. He asked for something, and and all the other guys said, no, 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 you shouldn't do that and stuff. So so their biggest concern was not to look poor. They wanted to look proud of their work and stuff. Um, yeah, um, oh, this is a little boring. A bore. Uh, yeah, this is just a little bit about camping equipment and stuff, and water and all stuff, and many hours of driving. Um, we'll skip that one. Um, on my first trip there, there was just after the rain season, uh, and 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 that's one of the things that excites me a lot. If you go on in these parts of the world, you very you depend on the nature. There's no shortcuts. If it rains, it rains, and and in this part of the world, there's no bridges, over, not all of the rivers. So if it rains, you just have to wait. And actually, when we were there, there was a girl. She got flushed away. Uh, one of the village girls because. The water comes down from the mountain, and it is pretty serious. So there, there's nothing to do but wait. So so it's depend on them, on them, the nature and 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 the stuff. So so you have to have quite a lot of time to 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 complete a project like this. Um, this is the end. Um, I just uh, want to finish off. Uh, um, and say that that even though there's uh, challenging shooting in this part of the world, that uh, but it's still I think um, Ethiopia and this this region I haven't seen all of it, but this region is is probably one of the most uh, beautiful places that I've been taking pictures and and travels. So I can definitely recommend it. Um, and yeah, that's it.